All righty, guys. I'm sure loving this. It's about 3 p.m., almost 3 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have all the indexes breaking out, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, you name it, with the Dow being about 50 points away from all-time highs, and the S&P and the NASDAQ both hit all-time highs today. We're going to break down what's going on with the indexes, talk a little bit about CPI, and we're going to go over SoFi stock in this video as well. So hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, and of course, follow me on X and on TikTok at Stocks Talk Stocks. Those are linked down below, guys. And with that being said, cheers. Let's dive right into the video. So again, we got CPI this morning from April and all the indexes are ripping like no other. The Russell's up 1%. Dow's up 0.7, Nasdaq's up 1.5%, and the S&P 500's up a little over 1% on the day as the VIX is down over 5%. You heard that right. The VIX is back in the mid-12s, which I might as well pull this chart up very quickly to show you guys the VIX is getting awfully close to the lows from a couple of months ago, right? And again, we're pushing all-time highs on SPY. We just hit $529 earlier in the day, breaking out of the previous all-time high from the end of March. And we have Triple Q ripping up to about, let's see, 453 completely taking out the highs from, it looks like here, the end of March, where we hit about $447, $448 per share. And get this, guys, the Dow's about 50 points from all-time highs, and we're getting awfully close to that critical critical milestone 40,000 points on the Dow which by the looks of it we're probably going to hit that whether it's tomorrow Friday maybe at some point next week and this is all because of the CPI data guys which let me pull it up here and show you what is going on bear with me I'll uh, make my face a little bit smaller here there we go guys the last thing you're going to want to stare at is my big old head whoops I just messed that up Bear with me here, guys. All righty, all righty, all righty. There we go. So we can see right here, this is the official CPI release. We can see the consumer price index for all urban consumers increased 0.3% in April on a seasonally adjusted basis after rising 0.4% in March and the let's see the annual number was 3.4 or is 3.4 percent and I believe they were estimating for that monthly number to be 0.4 percent and again it came in at 0.3 percent so inflation came in a little bit cooler than expected and it is down from last month's number in March where it was at 0.4 percent so that's pretty awesome guys and we can see here the chart over the past um, you know year it shows you the CPI on a monthly basis right here and it looks like here the core CPI number the index for all items less food and energy rose 0.3 percent in April after rising 0.4 percent in each of the three preceding months so that's really good news there guys that's coming down and you guys can see um, the chart here this line chart it shows you the last Last 12 months of core CPI and the headline CPI, uh, which is going in the right direction, which is down, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And looking at these categories, I don't want to spend too much time on the categories here today, but let me see anything that stands out to me. It looks like energy commodities popped from March to April from 1.5% to 2.7% on the month. So that's a decent jump there. Uh, let's see anything else that's jumping out at me. Um, not really any crazy movement here, guys. Maybe transportation services, 1.5% in March, down to 0.9% in April. Looks like apparel came up a bit, but not much, 07 to 1.2%. Uh, you know, not bad there for March to April. But yeah, guys, pretty much unchanged inflation. <clears throat> Nothing crazy. It looks like some categories slightly up, slightly down. It is what it is. And we're pretty much still, I mean, whether it's 3.4%, 3.3%, 3.5 on the annual number, 0.4, 0.3% on the monthly number. We're still pretty much relatively where we were last month on inflation. And the fact that, again, it came in cooler than expected is the reason why the markets here are taking off like no other. By the way, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did you think this was going to happen? Are you in calls or are you buying a bunch of shares of whatever let me know in the comments down below guys and again i can't say it enough 
All-time highs were hit on SPY, Triple Q, and it looks like the Dow were about to get there as well. Potentially, of course, nothing's guaranteed. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future, but we're looking pretty good right now, guys. The Bulls, I think it's safe to say, the Bulls are back in town, baby. Let's go. And when it comes to SoFi, it's not looking as good as the overall market. In fact, SoFi is in the red down 2.3% right now. And earlier in the day, I mean, look, it was at $7.70. And notice yesterday intraday, um, that's kind of where we peaked out at, 765 770 So we did slightly, slightly, ever so slightly break out of there um, this morning. But it didn't last long, right? We did, you know, struggle to break out fully out of that 765, 770 level. And then once we opened up, literally the selling came in on SoFi, right? We ended up dumping down all the way to about 720, 725. And clearly that's kind of where we've been coasting for the majority of the day since about 10 a.m. here on the East Coast. So SoFi is selling off a bit. It's still above the lows from yesterday in the pre-market where we hit about $7. Now we're at $7.25. And here on the five-day, guys, does this not look pretty good still in terms of, um, you know, it holding the uptrend? It sure does look pretty solid to me. I don't know about you guys, but it looks like we are holding higher lows right here, which is good news. And ideally for the bulls, we break above um, 735, 730 heading into close. That would be ideal because that was resistance. It looks like on what's today. Jeez, I'm losing track. Wednesday, that was resistance on Monday, right here on SoFi, right about 730. So if we get out of there, this could be taken off maybe mid sevens, maybe higher than that. And, uh, you know, the breakout could continue here on the smaller time frames. And obviously, if you pull the layers back a little bit more, we're not fully breaking out quite yet. Although here on the 20 day chart, it does look pretty good. We're above the moving averages. We have a golden cross, but we're not fully there yet, if that makes any sense. Right. And on the four hour time frame, clearly, uh, you know, we're struggling at lower highs here. Right. Boom, 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 boom. And this spot needs to break seven eighty eight dollars. Uh, you know, that's where the overall downtrend here that we have been in for, geez, a while now. It seems like, yeah, ever since the beginning of this year, we've been downtrending. That might break if we do get out of eight, eight fifty and start pushing uh, the highs that we were just at after earnings or right before earnings. Actually, no, after earnings. Um, either way. So what do you guys think? I'm going to set my alert at 775. I'll do one there for now. Mark is at or above $7.75. And I'll do another one. Let me set another alert here at maybe $7.35 for later today to see if we do get that breakout heading into close. And we'll see what happens, of course, after the bell with SoFi as well. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And I'm sure you all are paying very close attention to GameStop and AMC. Well, those are selling off pretty drastically today. Um, looks like GameStop's down 24%. It looks like it's at 36 bucks per share. And to be honest, it also looks like we're kind of consolidating, maybe finding a short-term bottom here. And the fact that we're now breaking back over the lows from yesterday, which mind you, yesterday we hit 36.30 roughly, and we got under that today. We hit 31 earlier today, but now we're back over 36. That's a pretty good sign overall in the very short term for the Bulls. And I know we can't really, you know, track the charts too closely on GameStop, AMC. It's very hard to trade the technicals on these because at the end of the day, they're not really moving on technicals per se, but hey. Clearly, we're still above the moving averages on GameStop and on AMC for that matter. Let me show you guys this, which we're still well above the 50 and the 180 SMAs. And I'm personally in an AMC call uh, <laughs> right now, which obviously is just for fun, guys. It was like a $250 buy. I bought the $9 uh, what the heck are they? Um, the nine dollar May thirty first call options, right? I bought those contracts, and I'm just well one contract, uh, <laughs> for two hundred fifty bucks, two twenty something like that. Either way, right in that ballpark, and it's it's kind of like a fun gamble, guys. I'm not one of those, 
um, traders, investors. That's like, oh, you you can't you can't trade any of these stocks. You better stay away. All of your money's got to be in index funds, like some buttoned up, boring boomer investor. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have money in index funds, no doubt about it. Blue chip stocks as well. But I'm a proponent of having some risky moves, taking some speculative bets, having some freaking fun in the stock market. Because at the end of the day, guys, let's be honest, we have fun doing this as well. Sure, we want to make money. It's not all about fun, fun, fun. Then we'd be chasing penny stocks and this and that all the time and we'll lose money. But it's good to have some fun, quote unquote, speculation you know, gamble investments, if you will, with a smaller amount of money that you're obviously willing to lose, which in this case, again, I'm willing to lose. So I'm in the $9 calls. I'm down like 50% on those already, at least last I checked. So we'll see how that plays out, guys. But yeah, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow along for more. And don't forget to check out the Patreon. If you guys are interested in joining and watching me build my $100 per week portfolio, all the buys, sales, returns, right? All that good stuff is on Patreon down below. Check out the QR code right here or go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. I'll see you in there, guys. And with that being said, cheers. Peace out.